Welcome to the Giving Town Podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Roberts, and my goal is to share stories of hope and generosity in our wonderful community of Newburgh. Today, I'm interviewing Denise Bacon with the Ford Family Foundation about a project called Nurture Newberg. We'll cover what this project is, how it got started, and ultimately how you can become a part of it and help Newberg focus on who we are as a community. This podcast is sponsored by my real estate team, the Joyful Roberts Group. We're licensed real estate brokers here with Premier Property Group, LLC. And it's a pretty challenging market right now with lots of changes happening and interest rates uh, changing. So I'd be happy to help anyone listening here, however I can. Uh, But we've got a lot to cover in today's episode, so let's get started. Well, thank you, Denise, for joining me today. I'm looking forward to our conversation. I think we've got a lot of great things to cover. So Denise and I both are in Rotary together, a part of the Newburgh Noon Rotary Club. And both with this podcast, the uh, the Giving Time podcast, and well, with the Nurture Newburgh project that we're going to cover today, we said, hey, we're kind of trying to do some of the same things here. Let's collaborate and um, find a way to work together. So we decided to have Denise come on, and I'm looking forward to our conversation. So Denise is also on the city council. She works with the uh, Ford Family Foundation and has a a really interesting past. So we're gonna cover some of those things today. And yeah, so Denise, tell us a little bit about your background and how uh, you got to be where you are now. Sure, thanks Daniel. I came to Oregon 25 years ago. I worked at a truck stop um, in Ohio where I met my husband and then we we moved here to Oregon. I we started a family here, and I stayed. I quit the truck stop and stayed home, and got really interested in creating a community that I wanted to raise my son in. Mm. And I got really involved when 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 I started seeing things that affected us happening around me. I said. How am I going to tell my son this is happening Mm. when I know I have the opportunity to change it? So that's how I became a city councilor. And when I was on the city council, I was invited to participate in the leadership classes that RDI and the Ford Family Foundation were doing all around the state of Oregon. So I participated in that. And then I was so interested in the work that they were doing that I became a volunteer coordinator or facilitator for those classes okay so i did that for seven years and actually i found out i got the job during one of those events okay (laughs) so yay um people I, i was looking for a job my son was older and five people sent me the job announcement at the ford family foundation because they were going out of the leadership class projects and going into putting someone in community to help people um, be the change they wanted to be in their community. Yeah. So I started working for them about six years ago now. Okay. And can you share a little bit about the Ford Family Foundation, how they got started and what their main mission is? Sure. The Ford Family Foundation was started by Kenneth Ford. And uh, Kenneth Ford and his family were in timber here in Oregon. So when the whole spotted owl thing happened and the timber industry kind of fell apart a little bit and he wanted to give back to the communities that he had worked in and the peop- and share with the people he had worked with. Okay. So it's and I'm a not private familiar family with, foundation. I'm not familiar with the spotted owl incident. <laughs> and then many people younger than, or around my age, maybe. Maybe not. Yes. yes. Well, can you give yeah. us a brief history lesson? So it's what? an environmental issue. Sure. The, the timber industry and the spotted owl um, clashed. Mm. And the spotted owl was protected. So so it really kind of hampered how, how the timber industry was working. Gotcha. Okay. So then out of that... Mm-hmm. So kind of so they Ford. do at the Ford Family Foundation, we work in rural Oregon and Siskiyou County, California, rural communities only. Okay. We also have a very large uh, scholarship program, okay that supports youth that want to go to Oregon colleges. 
So it's kind of, we have all these different departments. I work in the rural community building department. We also have children, youth, and family. We have an economic development and we have the scholarship and we have a small arts program and we grant money out into the communities. Okay. So it's, so you've been there for six years, you said. Mm-hmm. So, and it sounds like it's a perfect fit for you and what yeah, you're wanting to yeah. do. I love Like when I read their job description, I was like, well, this is what I'm already doing. Yeah. This is what I love. I love rural. I've lived in rural my whole life. I, I grew up in upstate New York in rural. I moved to Ohio in rural, Mm -hmm. and then I moved to Oregon in rural, and I picked rural on on purpose. I love it. I love the people. I like knowing my neighbors. I like if I send my child out into the community, he's going to run into eight people that he knows, (laughs) and he knows they're going to call me if he does anything wrong, and he does know that. He's 20. He turned 21 yesterday, and he, he, he also, you know, he understands the job I do and the work I do, and... He has been a part of it since he could walk. I I took him everywhere when I was campaigning. So he he really understands. Well, it's interesting because you mentioned um, just a bit ago, you wanted to be able to explain to your son, there's, there's certain things happening and how can I explain this this to him if, Mm -hmm. if I'm not doing anything about it, but now you've, you've had quite the history of being involved and doing things. How do you think that impacted him? I, I can tell you a story real quick. He's in, He's 21 now, but he was in our Interact Club for Rotary when he was in, uh, when he was a freshman. And for those who don't know what Interact is, Interact is, is the high school club for uh, Rotary. Okay. So I became I became the advisor for them the year before he was a freshman. Okay. So he came in. And he is a child who likes his mother, so he's not, like, embarrassed to be with me. So he joined my club right away and started bringing people, you know, asking his friends. And and he had a friend tell him, I can't wait to get out of this town. I don't want to. It's terrible. He's like, if you want to, this is, if you want change in your town, this is the way to do it. Hmm. You have to be it. So I was so proud because I knew he had been listening. Yeah. And he's also a Ford family um, graduate from the leadership program. He was in our very last cohort. Wow. So it sounds like your work as a mom and community member paid off. It did. It that, did. He, see, he sees the work. Yes. Yeah. What does that do for you as a mom to see your son kind of following in those steps? Um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty proud of him. He, at 21 years old, he, he is, they say he's the perfect combination of kind great boundaries and just this vision of of making the world better yeah treating people right being kind it's what every parent wants for their kids yeah for sure yeah so that kind of all is connected to in some ways what what you're doing now with uh the project that we're kind of here to talk about yeah, is the nurturing nurturing Newberg. Newberg. so tell us a bit about that and how that all came to be what it is now and what is becoming. Yeah. So originally Nurture, Nurture Newberg was Nurturing Newberg and it started really about uh, suicide prevention and um, a group of people. We had three suicides in 10 days and people started calling me both as a city councilor and as the Ford Family Foundation field coordinator. Um, we were trying to work out ways just regular citizens could help make the world better and, and how do we draw attention and how do we put our energy towards it? And my boss had sent this man named Anthony Biglin to meet me. We met at coffee cottage and we were sitting right next to each other, but we didn't know it. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then eventually I texted him and he's like, and we're both, ah, there we are right next to each other. <laughs> So I've learned Google someone before you go meet <laughs> yeah. them if you haven't met them yet. Uh, so Tony, uh, Dr. Biglin is an author and he wrote the book, The Nurture Effect, about how human behavior in communities can change communities. And he was a senior scientist with the Oregon Research Institute. So he's a behavioral scientist. So Tony gave me his book. I sat and listened to him for two hours. I was just, I could have stayed there for two days, actually. (laughs) 
And I took the book home and as many people, you know, who read would all understand it ended up on a pile next to my bedside. Mm -hmm. And then eventually I was like, I'm gonna, I got to read that book. And I picked it up and I made a deal with myself to read every 10 minutes a day. I got through the first chapter and I said, oh, the aha moment. This is the answer. This book is the answer. Dr. Biglin is the answer. So we kept on with that program, had events, did, you know, did all kinds of things together. And then COVID happened mm. and it kind of all stopped. That work stopped. Then when Newberg started making the news over the school board, Dr. Biglin called me and said, um, what are we going to do about this? Mm. So we revised <laughs> Nurturing Newberg into Nurturing Newberg. And we really we brought together a bunch of behavioral scientists. And we really talked about how we can use behavioral science to make Newberg remember who they really are. Yeah. The kindness, the helping each other, the just the basic human regaining the uh, the connection to people instead of just what we're doing on Facebook, where it's easy to be mean and it's yeah. easier, you know, you're not looking someone in the face. It's not your neighbor. It's not your, we, we just, it, it, it just really disconnected people. We thought between Facebook and COVID and isolation, all these things had taken their toll mm -hmm. on how people behaved. So how does the nurture effect work? What, what is Dr. Beglin's book about? The nurture effect is... We've got the book right here. I do have the... I have lots of tabs <laughs> yeah. in it too. He loves that part. He took a picture. Um, how the science of human behavior can improve the lives and world. So in the book, The Nurture Effect, Dr. Biglin talks about what communities can do, what elected officials can do, how we can build from childhood up and create a better world. So he starts with the at-risk mom. How do you take care of her? What do you provide for at-risk youth from you know, he breaks it into age groups. Um, actually, in Newburgh, we were able to bring in PAX, the Good Behavior Game, which is a classroom management style that focuses on what kids want to see, feel, and do more of in their classroom and what mm. they want to see, feel, and do less of. And they create the environment they want to see. And they work as teams. Okay. And they, you know, get to win grandma's wacky prizes for good behavior, which is things like five minutes of extra recess or getting to pick the word of the day or leading the class line. And it just helps kids focus on you will get attention if you're good instead of you will get attention if you're bad. Hmm. If you misbehave, you're, you'll, you just lose points. Let's all make points. And you, since you're doing it in a group, you have peers that you that you're accountable to, and that concept is actually the concept we use for our new campaign, the kindness, the Newberg nurture Newberg strategy for to rebuild kindness in. Okay. Yeah. So, have you seen this work before? It works. It works excellent in classrooms. We know that for sure. We ran a pilot program here. It it's been around for a very very long time. I was created by, I remember his name before I'm done talking. <laughs> he, um, you see it in kids themselves. I, I actually had someone call me with a story about the neighbor child who no one liked. Mm -hmm. he, he was annoying. The teachers didn't like him. The neighbors didn't like him. He just kind of got on everyone's nerves. And he was in first grade. Mm -hmm. And then... He eventually, after going into a PAX class, you noticed a complete flip in him because suddenly he started to behave well. Um, we also have it in Sheridan, and we saw a huge decrease in um, 
referrals to the principal. And if we, if we think about what referrals to the principal look like later in life would mm-hmm. be referrals to juvenile justice. Right. So when we see those kinds of numbers falling, we're knowing, we know that we're changing the behavior of, of people. Yeah. And you saw this on a personal level at a, at a job mm-hmm. experience you had. Yes. Yeah. I, when I came here to Oregon, I worked at a truck stop and they hadn't had a manager in like two years. So I came in quiet, sat, watched everybody, wanted to find out, you know, what was going on, who was leading the pack. And I came in one day and one of the prep cooks was cleaning out the freezer and he's scrubbing the walls and scrubbing all the shelves and putting everything back really neat. So I went in the break room and ripped down the board, announcement board, and I put up a thank you board. And I wrote a note to him and it said, Ramon. Thank you for going above and beyond. I really appreciate it, Denise. And I stapled it to the board. I went home that night and I came back the next morning and people were scrubbing corners <laughs> and scrubbing the walls and people just need to be seen and noticed and appreciated. And then they they grow in that and they, they thrive on it. Yeah, that's so that's so cool. And I think it's, I mean, it reminds me of the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, of, of when you notice the right things and people want to do more of those things. And as, as a dad, it's so hard. But when you notice the right things in your kids and encourage those versus when you only harp on the bad and say, mm-hmm. stop that, stop that. Yeah, that's, that's a good reminder. So was that before you had read The Nurture? Uh, that happened that? before I read okay. The Nurture Effect. I'm, I'm a natural um, human behavior okay. <laughs> person. I grew up in a, in a, in a challenging home and I was a survivor. I am a survivor of domestic violence. So you learn how to, you learn how to do that when you live yeah. in that situation, please, you know, draw out people in a positive way. Yeah. So as far as now Newberg, what does that same kind of idea or concept look like on a, on a city scale? So what we believe, we haven't start. We all, we've only done a little bit of a pilot project because we're we're applying for ARPA funds and we're we're looking for funding in other places. So we're we're just doing pilots to see what will happen. But what we believe is that people are so are only noticing the negative, mm-hmm. and no one is encouraging to notice the positive, and that once once we can drown out the negative voices in the room by and replace them with positive ones and and real positive behavior and calling them out every single time that that people will begin to notice it in themselves too and notice it around them instead of just noticing the negative because i think that's easier sometime right to pick up the negative yeah so and i'm just i'm just thinking of some ideas here kind of on the fly. I mean, so you have a Facebook page. What is the purpose of, of the page there? It's kind of on, a, on an overview. Uh, it's kind of tailing into a, a thought I have, but. Yeah. yeah. So the Facebook page eventually will, right now we have people just posting um, positive quotes and these, you know, when, when we do see positive behaviors, those who are participating in the pilot will post mm-hmm. them. But eventually it will be where we will publicly call out positive behaviors. Mm. And so this will be something that community members will, if they see something positive happening, then they'll put it on there. Is that yes. kind of the idea? Okay. Yes. Yeah, so we we're going to have two ways. We have, um, we're getting posters created where there'll be a QR code mm-hmm. that'll take you to a form you can fill out and then we'll post it for you. Okay. Or you can go right on the Nurture and Newberg again. And post it yourself. Okay. And what does that look like in terms of rewards? Because you, it's kind of a rewarding good behavior type mm-hmm. of thing, it sounds like. So what does that look like as a community, rewarding good behavior? I think people just will look for... Well, one, they'll look for their own name, right? If mm-hmm. you if if I was doing good things in the community and someone called me out, I'd be like, oh, well, that's cool. Yeah. And then I would also want to look for good behavior and call other people out for yeah. it. We're so quick to do the bad, right? Yeah. Never the good. And just, it will encourage people. Yeah. 
There's a strange kind of vulnerability that comes with with complimenting people and calling out the good. And that's something that is interesting, and I don't fully understand. But it's it's easier to to play the role of the the skeptic or the cynic, or to just there's kind of this I don't know macho type of thing, like oh like you know it's hard to please me or whatever. But to actually call out someone and say, hey, I had a really good experience with this. There's kind of a, I don't know, like, uh, I don't know what, I don't know what it is, but it's different, (laughs) but it feels good when you, when you do it and and it makes that person's life better. But I'm thinking at the grocery clerk, why is it, why is it so much harder when someone just does a decent job and smiles to say, Hey, you're doing a really good job versus if someone messes up your drink in the coffee line to call the manager and tell them. And I recently saw one thing on the, on the nurture Newberg uh, Facebook page. I really like this. So it was a, a, a man and his son were in the coffee shop and the barista said, Hey, here's your drink, sir. And he said, I'd like to talk to your manager, please. And everyone's kind of like, Oh, ooh, what's going on? So the manager comes up and says, uh, is there a problem, sir? And, and everyone's kind of looking around. He said, no, I just want to let you know, you all are doing a great job. And everyone just kind of smiled. I was like, Oh wow. And the, the boy said, why'd you do that, dad? And he said, because I can, because I can. And that's such such an amazing concept and it's i was thinking wow like it's so easy to do that and it makes such a huge difference yet it seems so hard or we just don't think about it we just don't think about it we don't it's not part i think we've been taught that right Hmm. call out the bad yeah instead of calling out the good and i think you know we can change it Mm mm-hmm we just need to make it our new behavior. And when that's what you're looking for, the good, guess what? You're not going to see as much of the bad. Yeah. Because when you're looking for bad, you see, you, you see what you're looking for. Always. Yeah. Always. Well, and I'm sure you've seen a lot of this. Even from the optimism, I'm kind of a optimist to a fault sometimes. <laughs> sometimes it makes me late. Oh, I can get there in, in three minutes. No, it takes seven minutes. I got to remember that. <laughs> but uh, you see what you're looking for. And um, there's been interesting studies by uh, like Harvard Business School looking at if an optimist will will see only, they'll only see good opportunities or pessimists will only see negative. If given the exact same information, they'll say, what did you see here? And they'll see two different things. So it's just interesting how that works. Um, But I think it's also partially, it's just a a culture shift that is needed, but that takes, that takes some time. Mm -hmm. And, and one of the things I think we've talked about that there's, it only takes a small minority of people who speak loudly negative things to, to make it seem like, Oh, I guess there's a lot of bad stuff going on and people are a bit more afraid to speak out the good things. And And that's what, that's that's exactly what drove us to this because mm-hmm. we actually ran the pilot program first to see to see what would happen and if if people would shoot down our negative or you know why are you being positive the whole world's negative or, mm-hmm. and no one did that instead the responses we were getting were I'm so glad you're doing this I'm so glad there's a place for me I'm so glad I that there's others, I because they did believe mm-hmm. that it was those few loud people represented everyone. And when they were given the opportunity to take the pledge to be kind and called out kindness, they felt like they had their own group. Hmm. And they're, you know, they're a very broad spectrum of people. It's not a left or a right. It's just all these people in yeah. the middle that felt like they were they were alone and they aren't. They're yeah. actually the largest population. Yeah. So once you gave them, once we gave them this this platform to tell us what they wanted, they created a word cloud of all the different things they wanted to see, feel, and do more of, and encouragement, and listening, and smiling, and love, and positive, compassion, and safety, and friendliness, and laughter, welcoming, volunteering. They they really respect right. They, they really wanted these things yeah. to be what they saw in Newburgh. So talk about that a little bit in the pledge that you just mentioned. Mm-hmm. What is that? So we do, we, on the website, on the Values to Action Nurturing Newburgh website, there's three steps. And the, that'll be, I'll have that in the, the episode notes, by the way, so you can go there. So the first step is tell us your vision of what you want to see, feel, and do more of. 
which is based on the PACS program in the school. Mm-hmm. And there's all it also asks you what you want to see, feel, and do less of. We're not publishing that as a word cloud <laughs> because we know. We know, we know. right? <laughs> we know what that is. We, yeah. don't, we don't we don't need to see it. <laughs> so so that's the first step. And then you can see it gets updated every single time every, there's new people. Yeah. And then the next step is the pledge where you pledge to be kind and point out kindness. And then the final step is filling is just reporting kindness. And we have, we have a couple different ways we're going to do that. You don't necessarily have to take the pledge. We'll put you, um, we have posters being made and where you can just do a QR code and it'll take you to a form that you can fill out and we'll fill it out. Or you can just go on our Facebook page and tell us your, your good moment. I think there's one, there's one that a couple days ago where I was, a man just stopped me in the Safeway parking lot and said, can I help you get your walker out of your car? Hmm. And how does it make people feel when they're seen and just take that two seconds to help someone. What is the, I mean, you mentioned like the flyers are these things that'll be like around town or like in businesses that want to collaborate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So we'll have those too. So you can also reach out to me if you want one of those. Okay. So part of that, I mean, what's the strategy of, and maybe there is a, a whole Nurture Newberg strategy. Um, <laughs> and, oh, it looks like there's a paper there. There's a paper. So <laughs> Newberg, <laughs> Nurture yeah. Newberg strategy. So yeah, share the strategy about okay. how it's going to look. So our first is, well, we're out seeking funding. Um, the second is the community creates the vision and they can continue. We'll mm-hmm. continue that. And can anyone at any time go into that page and fill out the yes, survey? Yes, anytime. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if you're listening to this, click on that link and at least have it open in another tab so that when you're done listening, you can, if, and if you're driving, pull over first. <laughs> <laughs> but you can click on that and, and definitely be part of this. Yes. Okay, so continue. So then because we're working with the Oregon Research Institute and we are working with Values to Action, Dr. Bigland's nonprofit, we're also running it kind of as a formal study as well. Mm. So there's a well-being survey on the on that same website so you can take that and it kind of will give us a marking point of how newberg feels today Mm -hmm. and i don't get that information by the way so i won't know who filled it and who said what so then we'll begin to recognize kindness using all the means and all the ways that we can do it and then after that um I've already had people bring me like, oh, I have this idea. Oh, I have this project. Maybe we could do this that Mm -hmm. I will be helping them do. We'll be at the farmer's market. We'll be all over where you can just fill out a paper and stick it to the board. Or we'll give lots of opportunities for people to talk about kindness. Nurture Newberg is not a nonprofit currently, but they're filing to be a nonprofit. So eventually after this program is done in about six months, we're planning uh, values to action. We'll do another survey to see if we were able to shift the needle on how people feel in community. Yeah. And we're doing that because Newburgh is not the only community struggling. Mm-hmm. Communities all over the country are struggling. So if we can figure out some points of how you can shift, make shifts, mm-hmm. we'll be able to share it. We'll, and we want to prove that we can. Yeah. I mean, this or is we such, hope to anyway. Yeah. Well, this is such a, I mean, this is exactly what I'm wanting to do with the podcast too, is what are the ways that we can get out the words of the good, of the positive, of the hope? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this podcast specifically is about generosity and what are the ways that people are, are giving? And that could be in any way. It could be time or, or financial or whatever. But I'm so excited about the possibilities of this. I just think going into, say, Fred Meyer or Safeway or one another big store and just seeing posters around. Like, do you see, did you, have you seen, you know, something, you mm-hmm. know, a kind act or whatever mm-hmm. and scanning a QR code to be able to fill it out? And a lot of people won't take the time to do it. But I think just seeing that around in, in prominent places, because I imagine especially a lot of small businesses want more of that and mm-hmm. want their employees to be recognized and because i think when for for people especially right now that they have a lot of job options so if you're working somewhere um where you're not recognized as much 
as a manager, why not have a poster saying, hey, do you recognize anything good? And if you start seeing those around town, you re- mm-hmm. there's, I think it's small things like that that create a culture shift of, oh, I guess, I guess that's what Newberg does. I guess we're people who call out the good. And and because everyone's kind of looking around at what everyone else is doing. And I guess that's part of, with the calling out the negative, it seems like that's what happened. Everyone kind of looked around and said, well, no one's really calling out the positive, so I won't either. But when you see positivity, I think it can be mm-hmm. contagious. So, yeah. so I'm excited for this. I think yeah. this is awesome. And if you were to open the newspaper and see an ad where you were mentioned, you know, mm-hmm. you recognize, oh, that was me. I did yeah. that. You know, I walked out of my house and a woman had stopped because there was a loose dog and she helped a woman catch it. That's kindness. Yeah. You could have just driven by, or drive right by. People do it all the day, right? Yeah. And she didn't. She stopped her car, helped the woman catch the dog. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Good stuff. I love that. When I just looking at this word chart here, seeing the listening is one of the biggest, um, one of the biggest things. And listening's hard. Actually, listening is hard. I, I think too of people who are on opposite end of the political spectrum. And I see neighbors who have yes for recall, no for recall, whoever the individual might be. And I just kind of wonder, what if they've ever talked about that, at least civilly, or do they just go out and get their mail and scowl at each other and go and not talk anymore? It's, um, I don't know. Is that, do you have any thoughts on that? Or is that a part of this at all? Like with neighbors and being neighbors? I think that's, that is a huge part of it, right? We judge people by, something that's in Mm -hmm. our head right and if you if they didn't have the sign how much would you really know about them most of my friends i don't agree with you know (laughs) but i but but i don't take their personal beliefs as something against me or my beliefs because that's not the way i act right Mm -hmm. we can have really super hard conversations and still respect each other at the end because people took a path to get there Mm -hmm. and i'm not the judge or the jury i'm just another human with different ideas so if you can tell me something and why you believe that and still be willing to listen to why i believe something different without saying that each other is wrong Mm -hmm. you all grow yeah right we all grow then because you know how do do we know we're right we know we're wrong we it's the path the path you're on yeah and it's so hard to get away from feeling so convinced of being right and another person's wrong and being willing to hold your maybe strongly held beliefs out there and say i could be wrong about this i mean those are the some of the most important words i think people can have is i could be wrong um it's hard i find a lot of people just aren't willing to say that it's here's why you're wrong here's why i'm right which just closes off your conversation <laughs> if i hear someone who Talk that way. I wouldn't even mention my beliefs. Come like so this would turn into an argument, and mm-hmm. that's <laughs> there's no such thing as winning an argument. So you stop talking, yeah, right, and then you assume everything about them is wrong, right? No, I know. Like I said, most of my friends, we don't believe, we don't mm-hmm. agree or believe on every single thing, but we can talk about it without fear because we have trust and love. Yeah. So I don't know if I cut you off as you were explaining your strategy. Or... Oh, no, no. And I think I finished it at the end. We'll do the survey over again with the same people who took okay. it originally. And we'll, we will uh, be able to see if we move that needle. Yeah, yeah. I think I did finish that. And so where are we at in the process right now? Here's the timeline, you ask. <laughs> <laughs> so right now we're working on funding. We have a few funders. Um, we, we could have just had one funder, but... I think having varied funders helps show um, the community that there's a lot of support for something if it mm-hmm. mul- has multiple funders. So that's first. We're doing that in. And, and the rest what will that funding go towards? What does that funding go towards? Mm-hmm. Okay. That funding will go towards um, paying the people at the Oregon Research Institute or managing the surveys. Um, values to actions manager who, who's taking care of the things like the word cloud and the Facebook and uh, the website. So he's taking care of that. And then Dr. Biglin and Dennis Emery, who invented PAX, by the way, that I couldn't remember his name earlier. Okay. He 
he and Tony are working for free because they just believe so much in the work that we're doing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So okay. that's what that goes for. And sure. then I will help with the um, printing and the, the little um, extra things that we're going to gotcha. need posters and. Okay. So that's the first stage. Mm -hmm. And then. Yeah. So then we'll just get going and push the, reporting kindness and showing up everywhere and yeah. publishing it in multiple places because, you know, we all get our information from different places. And if you see it in different places, it's also helpful. Yeah. So, you know, the newspaper, Facebook websites, um, we'll figure out other ways, I'm sure. Yeah. And then, like I said, I've had people come to me already with other ideas of how to, you know, potluck dinners and just dif different ways of creating space where people can be neighbors and friends. Yeah. So I've had that, you know, people constantly coming to me with that since they were in the pilot program. So they've been thinking about it. So we'll continue that all the way through August. And then in September, um, we will do a new, we'll do the new survey and then values to action will be done and nurture neighbor will be a nonprofit of its own. And that way people who have just everyday individuals who have really great ideas for small projects that promote things that we've heard on our visioning that people want, they'll be able to come to us and say, Hey, I have this idea. And they'll be able to go to other foundations or other non grantees okay. grantors and, uh, get money to come through us to work on Newburgh. Okay. So what is your main hope for the, what this accomplishes in Newburgh? I think I have, I have really two big things. I want Newburgh to remember who we are. Mm. We are a kind, loving community. I, I remember seeing you know, somebody post on one of the community pages, I ran out of gas at grocery outlet at 11 o'clock at night and some perfect stranger just went and helped them. That's who we are. Hmm. That is who we are. And that is who we've always been. We're, we're loving kind people and we need to remember and go back to that. That's my number one. Number two is that people will be more willing to understand that we all don't have to think alike to love each other. Hmm. You, you don't have to agree to love each other. I think that's fundamental for mankind to realize yeah. if we're going to survive. Because if we all build our, our little spaces where we're all just talking to people who agree with us, that's when we believe we're right. right? Yeah. When you live in this bubble of people just like you, you don't have space to discover really wonderful people who, are, who aren't in your bubble. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for what you're doing. I think this is a, a much needed project, obviously, and I am very optimistic and hopeful about what it is and look forward to being a part of it and getting the word out. If you're listening to this, uh, please go and take that survey and, and become a part of what Nurture, Nurture Newberg is doing. Um, is there any other way that people can get involved with this program? Yeah, they can just email us and we'll... We'll help them. Okay. And what's the email to reach you at? D Bacon. So D B A C O N at T F F F dot work. Okay. And that's for the family Ford foundation. Mm -hmm. right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, thank, thank you too. Yeah. For what you're, you're doing. This is, yeah. this is, um, I, I, like I said, I'm very hopeful for, um, but I mean, there's what you're doing and what there, there's so many stories about there about amazing things. And I'm, uh, thankful to be able to do what I do as you're thankful to be able to do what you do. And I really feel hopeful for uh, the future of our community. So it's great talking to you today Me and I can't wait to get the message out. Thanks, Daniel. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. And I hope you were encouraged and inspired by what Nurture Newberg is doing. Please do go to their website and fill out that survey and get involved. We really need your help. And also to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Giving Town as each episode comes out, hit that subscribe button uh, and also share this episode with anyone who you think needs to hear it. 
Again, this podcast is sponsored by my real estate team, the Joyful Roberts Group. And if you reach out, I'd be more than happy to help with any of your real estate needs. Well, thank you for tuning in and I will see you next time.